and we are back with percussion. So my go-to orchestral percussion library is Cineperk. I know it's I've worked for Cine Samples and so maybe I'm biased because I know the people who made it, but I will say that Sony is incredibly flattering to percussion and Dennis Sands did a marvelous job recording it. The reason I'm saying this is not just is this a very, very deep sample library with so many instruments, I don't even think I've ever used all of them in my life so far, but it's also properly recorded in terms of the low end is there, the detail is there, it comes not just with regular make positions, but also with the quad surrounds and the low instruments also come with an LFE. So you can actually, it's very natural sounding library, but if you want, you could produce the heck out of this and turn it into, you know, trailer type library or the most epic produced sounding library that you ever want. Obviously you need that skill because it doesn't come pre-produced. Cineperk Epic has some pre-produced stuff in it, but for the most part, it's just very, very, very complete, very detailed orchestral library. So that's definitely my go-to for most of my stuff. I'm, I'm not going to repeat myself with all the other stuff. I mean, it's properly edited, programmed, you know the drill. It has the same interface as the Cine series, um, so it's all good. Sometimes I need to shorten the releases a little bit to make the percussion lines a bit cleaner. I did a whole video about that, how to clean releases. Um, so I find that I have to do that sometimes. I don't generally have to touch a lot of the mic positions. Sometimes I will, especially if I'm producing the percussion a little bit instead of just going for a natural sound. Because I think the full mix that Dennis Sands did is a very natural sounding full mix that sits really well with an orchestra. But if you want a percussion driven piece, um, then you might have to produce it a little bit and maybe take other mic positions. Some of their patches have some noises on them. I mean, you can just go into the back end. It's what I do and just take out those samples. Um, but the noises for the most part aren't that egregious that you have to do that. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's fairly noise free. I mean, it's so many samples. I, I know that I was there when we did the 1.1 update and it was so hard to go through everything and take out um, even more noises than they already did in version 1.0 and even now there's still noises left in there and you know I just it's it's almost impossible to clean up this many samples
So then once we get past Cineperk, which really covers like 90% of my orchestral needs, um, I do have some produced percussion libraries. One of them, of course, being Damage, as everybody has Damage. It's just one of the most well-produced sounding libraries out there. Um, I don't use the loops in general or anything like that. I, I also always blend it with other libraries just to give it a touch of uniqueness because I don't want people to listen to my stuff and go, well, that's that patch from Damage. Everybody uses that. Yes, we all use the Armageddon Ensemble. It's fine. I, I mix it with other stuff and I know there's this whole debate about, you know, Damage 2 coming out and I, it just came out. I haven't tried it out yet. And, you know, people just going, well, but everybody uses that and then it's everywhere. It, we had the same debate about Storm Drums 2 and Storm Drums 3. I used Storm Drums 2 as well, haven't tried 3. Um, I think as long as you don't use pre-programmed loops and you actually just get creative with the library, it's fine. Nobody, I don't think anybody has ever pointed to my music and went, well, that's damage. Because I usually don't use it exposed. I use it, you know, in combination with other stuff. And I use it creatively. So, you know, it's what you make of it. But Damage, very, very great library. I use it all the time, especially for action cues. It's just good. And then I use the Spitfire Hans Zimmer percussion. Um, I know I dunked a little bit on Spitfire in my previous video. Uh, sorry about that. Um, but Zimmer percussion, great. It's strangely well edited. It's well timed. It sounds good out of the box. Again, I have to shorten some of the releases a little bit because it just comes with so much room on it. It's like a five second tail on those hits which I don't want or need. It just sounds messy. Um, but you know, that's an easy fix. Um, and it also, it has these creative things in it, like buckets and darabuka and stuff like that, which is just kind of cool. Um, it, it has, it, it can be used in an orchestral context, but it has a very specific color to it then, or a specific character. And I also love that they recorded ensembles instead of solo instruments, that you have piadi ensemble. Because I can never make piadi work properly in my pieces until I heard that patch and I'm like, yeah, that doesn't sound a lonely pair of piadi being hit in the back of the room. It actually sounds like a proper piadi ensemble being hit. And it just blends so much better. Same with the Tam Tam Ensemble and, and just everything. Everything in that library sounds good. I still mix it with other stuff, but I don't really have any particular complaints about the Zimmer percussion. It sounds well produced. It has some great uh, instrument combinations in it and I use it all the time.
Then I mentioned I used to use storm drums too. Uh, don't use it anymore just because play. Um, I just wish they released a contact version of that, but they won't, of course not. But yeah, it's not... I try to avoid play in my template at all cost. <laughs> And also, it, it wasn't particularly well edited. I do remember there were timing issues, and or maybe it was the play engine acting up, but I do remember that. So, you know, I don't use it anymore. Now, I've tried out a bunch of the Native Instruments percussion libraries at other studios. Not a fan, because they're kind of dummy libraries. They're kind of set up in a way that they're super easy to use, but they don't necessarily... You know, it's kind of the press a button and magic happens kind of thing. Which is great if you need to compose really quickly, but it's not really, for what I do, it's not really that useful. I haven't tried the orchestral tools percussion. Um, would love to try it, but I haven't had the opportunity to do it, so I can't comment on that. I have heard my additional writers use the Spitfire percussion, and I've also used it at some... Um, some studios, the the orchestral percussion, and not a fan. I don't know why the Zimmer percussion sounds so great, and then the orchestral percussion doesn't. It sounds very thin and tinny, and especially the the instruments that should have like a really nice low end body just don't have that. It just I actually got my additional writers to stop using that, <laughs> so I was like, I can't. We have, in the mix, we have to do so many corrections with that percussion. I just, it's too much work. Please use something else. Um, so they've actually, ever since also, I think, switched to Cineperk and the Zimmerperk. So no loss for Spitfire. We're still using the Zimmerperk, just not the orchestral percussion. Because it's just really inferior to Cineperk. And it's kind of offering the same thing. I haven't tried the Hollywood percussion. Because, again, I stopped using East-West a while ago, so I don't know what that's like. So if anybody knows, you can comment on that. I do use some of the ADO custom percussion, or custom is the wrong word. They're colorful um, percussion, I, I should say. I don't know a better word for it, but they have all these little percussion libraries that just are very unique in what they do. I use some of those. I will pair those into the video where I put all the pianos and, and other miscellaneous libraries because I think it fits better there. Of course, there's a ton more percussion out there, especially the epic latest, biggest, baddest trailer hits, whatever they are offering, you know, or trailer loops or whatever it is. I don't generally buy into these products because, first of all, you can create a trailer hit by just taking a pencil and hitting the desk. Record that, produce it right, and you, you have what you need. But also you can just take a hit from, a percussion hit from any other library that you own and then learn how to produce that right and you have a produced trailer hit. You know, you don't need other people to do that for you and then sell it to you. So I don't really buy into that, but also I'm not really writing that kind of music. So it doesn't really impress me when someone's coming out with, you know, the biggest, baddest, epic percussion library. Because um, I'm like, that's not really what I do. I do write a lot of action cues, but for animation, uh, you know, even the video game stuff that I do is, it has some produced percussion in it, but then I'll do that myself. I will have that skill to actually produce the percussion that I'm using instead of buying something pre-produced that is printed in the audio and that can't really be modified that well. I just, I don't know. I'm not a fan of that. So, but if you, if you are and you need that kind of stuff on a daily basis, you know, by all means. I hope this was helpful. I know I don't know as many percussion libraries as I probably should, but that's just because the ones that I have are such great all-rounders that I just don't need anything else, I think. Um, but yeah, I hope you got something out of this video.